uh, five, uh, uh, five, five cent tour on infrastructure as code. Um, we're using declarative state files to push out configuration changes into the cloud. Simply put, uh, there's different tooling to do this. There's Terraform and Pulumi. The tool that I work with a lot is called Terraform. It's a, it's a command line interface tool that you run. It has declared state with these uh, Terraform files, and it pushes it out to the cloud provider via these providers, via their API that the cloud provider makes for us. So I'm gonna skip over the rest of this. Now, if you guys want my slides, uh, I'll post them out on LinkedIn. You can follow me on, uh, on, on Twitter, and I'll get those out to you guys. I'm gonna skip over, we've got a lot of slides. Let's talk about purple teaming. We're all in this together to make our security programs better. So it's really the red and the blue team working together to make things better. And the, the red team is gonna find the vulnerabilities and work with the blue team in order to instrument log sources that are enriched, that have, make sure that the blue team is trained. So those type of elements. So we work on detection engineering, we work on improving the log sources, and we're, the red and blue team are working in cooperation together. So that's the concept of purple teaming. All right, so let's, so one more slide here on purple teaming. So this got a little mixed up here. So there's a guy named George Aquiles. He's got a lot of great resources on building your security program with purple teaming. Um, I was doing a, a little side story in this. I was doing a consulting project where I was doing technical program building of, um, of security teams with purple teaming. And George has this project called the Atomic Purple Team Framework. And so it's a nice tool that you can take uh, templated exercises and get the CIO and the, um, the CISO to approve those, and then you run the red team exercise, and then you look in the logs and you see what the, if, if your logs actually defend against the attack. So that's called Atomic Purple Team Framework, but he's got a lot of good stuff out there for that. Why these security simulation labs? So I kind of cringe when we say the word cyber in the cyber range. I, I'm trying to push this towards talking about these simulation labs. So we're talking about creating labs where we push them out into the cloud provider, we run the attacks, and then we destroy them when they're done. So they're pristine environments. Uh, and it saves on a lot of cost, and you can easily create them and customize them however you want. So what I wanna do is give you guys some ideas on, if you haven't seen some of these, maybe you can take them back to your company and use them as a learning tool to try a tactic or a technique against an environment, and then you get better, right? I mean. You can't attack what you don't have access to. So when you're doing pen testing with red teaming, you don't always have access to the production environment or you wanna mirror the customer environment before you start a pen test. That's why we do these simulation labs to get better. So I'm gonna talk about the old ones that have been around for a while and then I'm gonna talk about the new ones. So the, the, new, the ones that have been around a, a while, the classic ones are detection labs and Splunk attack range and ADAT. I'm gonna talk in a second about that. And then there's called Ghost, if you've never heard of that. And then I'm gonna segue in on my tools, Blue Cloud and Purple Cloud. And we'll spend the rest of the time talking about Purple Cloud. I love Detection Lab. Anyone use Detection Lab in the room? So Detection Lab is basically by Chris Long here. And so it's basically a detection engineering lab for you to run attacks. And it has uh, logging best practices already configured in it. And it's a free tool, and it's, it's fantastic. It's very solid, very stable, and it has a lot of nice tooling. It has Windows event forwarding with all the security Windows event logs you want. It has Sysmon, and it packages all that, and it scores it into Splunk. So when you bring up the range, you can practice with Splunk and blue teaming. And it also has OS query with Fleet Server Manager. It has Velociraptor, so it's got a lot of good stuff. So this is kind of a view of um, a detection lab. I love detection labs. The other one here is Splunk Attack Range. It's made by some employees of Splunk. And um, it's a little bit different than Detection Lab because they have Python orchestrator scripts that will remotely simulate attacks um, over, over, remotely over the network. So Splunk Attack Range has support for uh, Atomic Red Team. And so it'll remotely run the attacks. And you can map those attacks in a MITRE ATT&CK framework. So this is what Splunk attack range looks like. Now there's a key element here of how these are the same. They are um, single host 
detectioneering ranger. So you run attacks on a single host that's not connected to Active Directory, and it's really good to test like EDR bypass, to test your endpoint security, to see if it's gonna instrument. But the way we're going here is looking at systems that are joined to an Active Directory domain with transit of trust, okay? So then we go into this tool called a DAS. So a DAS is Active Directory Hunting Lab in Azure, and what, what this researcher did for Datadog is he basically instrumented Elk server with best practices log forwarding, but he made Windows 10 endpoints joined to AD domain. So now you can do lateral movement, you can attack between the systems, you can use domain user credentials and attack systems, and then you look in the logs to see what, do you have your logs properly forwarding and detecting attacks? So this is the first of looking at bringing AD systems together. Now, anyone heard of ghosts or played with ghosts yet? <laughs> Charles did because I just told him this morning. So <laughs> Ghost is a fantastic tool if you think about realistic simulating user behavior, okay? So Ghost, the idea is it creates NPCs, non-player characters, and it's basically users on your network that are checking email, downloading files, logging in with their browsing the web, connecting to SMB shares, and their behavior is captured in a JSON file. And the Ghost binary runs on Windows 10, so basically creates realistic static white noise. So when you're doing red teaming and blue team, you're not just creating a digital forensic range, you're doing it when user, real user behavior is in there. Question? Yeah, are these AI things or, or uh, is there like a, a conglomerate that actually does this here? Yes, absolutely. It's not an API. It does support an API. Um, they use JSON files like timeline JSON. And so what you do is you just customize each file and put it on each Windows 10 endpoint. And then so you can change those files. And then over time, they even have a Grafana API and dashboard so you can connect to it with API and send commands to it, to the console, and it changes the user behavior. And then it has Grafana dashboards, which are awesome. So you can like measure what users are doing over time. But then it just makes things more realistic for you. So this is a free tool and so the use case is here, if you're creating a training class, if you're, you're creating a CTF, you can add these type of tools to that and get ideas to make things even more powerful for you. So here's kind of a use case for this. You add ghosts into your little cyber range, and then you're that much more effective when you do realistic simulations of attacks and, and defenses. Now we get to the, <laughs> the purpose of this. We're gonna talk about my tools Blue cloud and purple cloud, okay? And now we have to start to distinguish between these different simulation labs, okay? So on the left, we have the single host focused. Those were the first three that I mentioned to you, mainly detection lab and Splunk attack range, because you're really running an attack on a single host and looking at EDR and security bypass. Then you have a DAS that's kind of in the middle because on the right, we have a multi-host Active Directory focus. So now we're moving into like lateral movement and attacks against domain joined systems. So a DAS is in there, but Purple Cloud is like shifting even more over to the right, and I'll explain why. So here's kind of my story and my evolution of this. I started out uh, just creating a single instance of Azure Helk. Hunting Elk is a sim that's open source by Roberto Rodriguez, a security researcher, and it's, and it's a great tool. So I created Azure Helk first, then I took uh, an Azure VM and instrumented Velociraptor, and so Windows 10 systems automatically connect the agent to the server, and you can do stuff with that. And then I combined Helk and Velociraptor together on the same server, and then that was the blue team side of Blue Cloud and Purple Cloud. So Blue Cloud is Basically, at is, is basically Velociraptor and a sim instrumented in either Azure or AWS for detection engineering, but it's single host. So what you can do with Blue Cloud is if you want to do run attacks against a Windows endpoint, um, all those logs are going to sh get shipped via WinLog into Helk, Hunting Elk, and you have a nice Kibana interface. So you can do attack simulations that way. And then you have the Velociraptor instrumented as well. I also added in Atomic Red Team, Elastic Detection Rita, and APT Simulator tools onto Blue Cloud. 
but I've stopped working on blue cloud because I put everything into purple cloud. So I'm going to explain what purple cloud is here. Okay, now we're getting into purple cloud. So purple cloud is a simulation tool where you can create a bunch of different labs. There's eight different simulators right now. And it's a first of its kind identity lab where you can create your own identity lab or hybrid identity, okay? So we're seeing a lot of companies that are starting to move and shift into the cloud and they're on premise as well. So they have a mixed hybrid identity or they have, um, they're fully cloud first. And so Purple Cloud is for that. So here's the documentation on the site. It's purplecloud.network. What they are are their Terraform code generators that create unique ranges for your different use cases. So instead of giving you guys Terraform templates, I don't know if you guys have worked with Terraform, but it's kind of unwieldy. It has its own uh, programming language called HashiCorp HCL, HashiCorp Configuration Language. So instead of offering up templates where you have to manually edit it, I basically created Python scripts that generate the code for you. So what you do is you run a script and you pass parameters and it'll generate all the Terraform for you. Now you guys are gonna see the magic of this in the next demos where I show you how this works. So Purple Cloud is not a, uh, it is not a guided vulnerability lab. If you're looking for a highly structured environment that already has vulnerabilities in it, this is not what that is right now. What it is is build your own lab style creative type of environments where um, it's built for security researchers, blue or red teams to run attack simulations, and bug bounty. Um, any of you guys like to make money on the side doing cybersecurity research? Any of you guys? You, sir? Well, check this out. Microsoft has a very generous bug bounty program. Don't know if you guys have seen this. You can check this out. They have, um, for identity type vulnerabilities, they pay up to 100K. So that's kind of what we're, the area that we're, we're talking about, right? the bug bounty around Microsoft identity. So you can also, it's kind of like Metasploit framework that has um, payloads and exploits. You can mix and match the different uh, simulators to create your own custom enterprise environment. I've even had one user story where a guy let me know that he created his own detection engineering training class using Purple Cloud. So it's very powerful that you can create your own creative type of lab that you want. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the generators here, and then we'll start. What we're going to do is we're going to talk. We're going to actually do um, a demo of each generator. Okay, now this the lab is the demonstrations are kind of starting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build out five labs. I'm going to start building them, and then I'm going to keep on talking. And by the end, I'm going to I'm going to run some of the actual attack demonstrations. Okay. So this is the first one. This is Azure Active Directory, okay? So this is the same code you guys, guys could go out and download right now. And I'm actually going to my documentation site here and bringing up one of the usage examples. And this is the only real attack example where you can run uh, a privilege escalation attack right here. It's called Service Principle Abuse Attack Primitives. So what I'm doing here is I'm going in and I'm generating HashiCorp Terraform files. So it, it generated all the Terraform. Now I just do Terraform apply, and it's pushing the changes out into Azure. What it did is, is it created by default, I think like 30 AD users. It created Azure AD apps and groups and service principles in a vulnerable scenario. So I'll show you guys how we can attack that. So it's, it's already pushed it out. It was like that fast. You can create thousands of users. It has a random user generator so you don't have to even import. It will dynamically create the users. Now I'm gonna do an app consent phishing. Any of you guys dealt with app consent phishing? I'm gonna generate a, um, a phishing consent. This is one of the generators. And I'm gonna do Terraform apply. Okay, now this is the newest generator I just released two days ago. ADFS, app Active Directory Federation Services. So this is Microsoft's on-premise SSO SAML solution. If you have applications out on the internet and you want to basically have a single set of user credentials, they'll integrate into your internal Active Directory. ADFS was involved in the security incident with um, Golden SAML with SolarWinds. Golden SAML is the actual exploit 
and now you can actually practice this within an enterprise environment. So this is, um, this is ADFS generator. Let's generate, generate the code real quick, ADFS lab. Let's do a real simple one. Let's do a self-signed certificate and let's generate that. Okay, so we generated that. Now let's do Terraform Apply. And then here's also the last one that's the brand new generator called Azure AD Join. Azure Active Directory Join. What this is is a lot of companies that are moving into the cloud where they take Windows 10 devices and they join them to, Active, to Azure AD. So then you have a single set of credentials like your Azure Active Directory creds. You can actually log into VMs. So there's a lot of new use cases like Microsoft Intune, device management. There's um, VDI deployments that are, using, that are using this as well. So let's do um, Azure AD join generator. Let's just grab the most simple example here. So this is gonna create users as well. Okay, now finally, the fifth one, uh, Azure Sentinel. So uh, Purple Cloud creates a Sentinel environment. So it's basically a cloud native SIM and you can do detection engineering. I've ad added support for Purple Sharp. So it automatically downloads Purple Sharp onto all the Windows 10 endpoints and it ships Sysmon logs into Azure Sentinel. You can spin it up, run attack simulations and then spin it down whenever you're done. So let's go into the, the Sentinel, Azure Sentinel generator. And the cool thing about this, I'll, I'll walk through this in the slides, you can create a, a realistic enterprise environment with hundreds and thousands of AD users, not just a single attack. You can do, um, you can create a domain controller and run Sentinel with that. So I'm just gonna do, let's do one endpoint, which is one Windows 10 endpoint. and then Terraform apply. Okay, so now we're good to go. Now let's go back to the slides and then I'll keep talking. So these are kind of running and they're pushing changes into the cloud. So here's, here's the generators. We have um, ADPY in the top left corner. This creates an Active Directory environment. This is basically competes with the first uh, tools I showed you, Detection Lab and um, Splunk Attack Range. I'll, I'll talk more in depth on what it does. Uh, but if you want to play around with Active Directory in a realistic enterprise environment and learn, the AD.py generator is for you. The Azure AD.py, moving to the right, creates a realistic Azure AD environment, um, and it pushes it out automatically. The Sentinel one is, creates an Azure Sentinel environment. The phishing app, any of you guys getting hit with like app consent phishing or hearing about that in your security programs, the phishing app gets created for you automatically, so you can do a malicious app consent phishing attack. Then we have the ADFS lab. We're generating that as well. We have the Azure AD join generator. And then there's something called manage identity. Manage identity is when you can have, um, basically it's the equivalent of an instance profile attached to an Azure VM. So you can have roles attached to an Azure VM to, to do your business workloads. And then storage generator creates a vulnerable storage environment. It will upload uh, sensitive files and then you can scan and test and find vulnerable storage. So here's the workflow. You, do, you CD into the generator directory, and then you just do Python space script name. And then you do Terraform init, Terraform apply, and then you're running away with it. When you're done, you do Terraform destroy, so it's very nice and easy to run these. Okay, Azure Active Directory Lab. So this, now we're talking about each one of the generators a little bit more in depth. This is, um, it randomly generates as many Azure AD users as you want. You pass it as a, as a parameter. In this example here, we're creating 500 users. This is kind of what it looks like. It automatically filters out duplicate users and it outputs the files to text files, which is really nice for other automated tools. Sorry about that. 
that. Um, it really makes it nice for other tools to run attacks because it'll write out the usernames to a file, the email addresses to a file, and then it writes their full name to a CSV file that has their email and their username. So you can use that for doing attacks against users. That's what I was just saying there. It auto creates all the users and then assigns them randomly into different Azure AD groups. If you've ever tried to manually edit uh, Terraform files, it's very unwieldy and this kind of automates all that for you. And then I have one vulnerable attack scenario, a service principle abuse attack scenario where a user can elevate to global administrator. So it creates that for you. And I have a workshop. I'll provide you some information at the end on a free workshop that we created so you can run through that yourselves. Where we're going here is we're talking about a, a Microsoft researcher created the Azure Threat Research Matrix. What we're talking about here is mapping attacks into the Azure Threat Research Matrix and then looking at our logging and our security controls to see if we can detect that. So that's what I'm, I'm gonna show you guys here. Here's an example <coughs> with the Azure AD Lab where I generated like 300 users and then I did a password spray attacking my own tenant. <coughs> These are the kind of things you guys could do. You can stand up a lab before you do a pen test to understand the behavior of Azure. You see, Azure has a feature called Azure Smart Lockout. Azure Smart Lockout will basically detect password spraying and it'll, it'll invalidate your results. So you have to be real careful on how you scan and find valid Azure users. But it can be easily bypassed. You can bypass it by rotating your IP addresses. See, this is the power of the cloud to use it for penetration testing. You can use the infinite network capability of the cloud to rotate your IP address. So a lot of these attacks are gonna start happening where you can just rotate your IP and I'm using Amazon API Gateway. Is there a question? No. Uh, I'm using Amazon API Gateway to rotate my IPs. And let's just look here in the logs. I'll show you guys what this looks like here. Let's look at my sign-in logs. I did a, I did a password spray yesterday. Um, and look here, all the IP addresses coming in from all over the world, London. Dublin, Paris, hitting all these different Azure AD users, and they're getting in, right? Because password spraying can be effective when you rotate your IP addresses. The golden age of hacking used to be really, really easy, and now you have Azure Smart Lockout, but we can still bypass that. The interesting thing about this is that um, I haven't seen yet Azure being able to detect this. When you rotate your IP addresses, but it's completely possible to do this very easily. Do you know why? Because the cloud providers publish out their IP addresses and they actually make it really easy for you to detect Amazon API Gateway IP address ranges because, let me show you here real quick. Inside of this um, request IP rotator, we have um, IP ranges, J so this is all of Amazon API gateways ranges for AWS. So now what you can do is you can add this into your tooling on your SIM or your blue team and you can parse out and correlate every IP that comes in when, it, when you're getting a password spray. And so look at this, this command with JQ. This JQ command is just parsing out all the API gateway ranges and these are all the API gateway ranges. So you can instrument this in your SIM and you can auto detect when you're getting sprayed and they're rotating the IP addresses and you can blacklist this dynamically. So I don't know why Azure hasn't implemented this yet, but this is, this is something you could definitely do. So Sentinel detections, we can use uh, Custo query language and we can query the sign-in logs and instrument and detect when this is happening. This is another Azure Threat Research Matrix. We have service principle privilege abuse. The attacker is elevating their privileges and assigning roles in an unauthorized way. We can use the Azure audit logs to detect this. And all of this can be done automated and you can run these attacks. So you can use Purple Cloud to stand this up. This is an example of a KQL query 
So I'm trying to map this in and understand this attack behavior and document this against with Purple Cloud. Now here's my second simulator is the AD simulator. So this is basically creating a custom um, sim environment with Azure VMs. And each one of the Windows 10 endpoints will, will ship Sysmon logs to a sim if you want it to. They also, uh, one of the features that was requested was that how do you import in your own custom list of users? Well, I, I just added this feature now. You can create like thousands of users in a CSV file and it'll automatically build AD with those users. It will also randomly generate as many users as, as you want. It will automatically create OUs and AD groups and assign them to make it look like a realistic enterprise because that's what we see a lot. It does an automatic domain join on each VM. It will also do auto log on domain users. This is the most powerful feature here. Have you ever tried in a pen test to like connect to a system and it says the user's already logged in? This will automatically randomly select a domain user and log them in the, with their own domain user creds into each workstation. So then when you try and attack, you see that they're already logged in. Then you can do memory extraction techniques like Mimikatz, you can extract their, their LSAS credentials. So it makes it so much more realistic. And so none of the other cyber ranges out there are really doing this. So this is an example of this generator creating an AD environment. It will write out a file called AD users CSV. So you have all the users and all, the pa all their passwords in a file. By default, it will randomly generate user passwords. Now this is why I change it up here because I create each Terraform file for each Windows 10 instead of using the modules interface of Terraform. Uh, Terraform has a modules interface that's unwieldy to customize. So I basically coded this where each Windows 10 Pro is a separate Terraform file. So after it generates it, then you can go in and manually edit the Terraform file or copy it off and use it however you want to. So this is what, after building AD, what it looks like. We have a domain controller, three, three Windows 10. They're all domain joined right there. This is the nicest one, auto log on domain users. Now you're running realistic attack simulations, extracting credentials out of memory and doing the things that real adversary are doing. Passwords default to, custom, to strong, randomly generated, but you can also pass the command line parameter to specify your own password, making it easier for you. And then it builds Hunting Elk and Velociraptor server, and you can even customize your own Sysmon config. So if you want to customize Sysmon, you, you say, I want to um, take these files in the range and update the version of Sysmon binary. It supports version 14, which is the latest right now. But you can create your own customizations. It uploads it to the Azure storage, and each system downloads it when it bootstraps. And then it includes Velociraptor. I'm, I'm a big fan of Velociraptor, like in the defer community. It's a very popular tool. Uh, it does Terraform. It creates an internal PKI that automatically pushes out to the server and the clients. So they automatically register. And that's all done via Terraform TLS provider. Now, hybrid identity is not, this is not a range. This is just saying it drops the latest Azure AD Connect onto the domain controller's desktop. So if you want to do, if you want to research vulnerabilities on Azure AD Connect and a hybrid deployment, it takes a very long time to manually configure this every time. This tool will automatically, what you do is you, you do the AD generator and you do the Azure AD generator. So you've created your hybrid environment. Then you just double click on the Azure AD Connect MSI and then you bridge the two together and it's, everything's already downloaded for you. So it makes it easier. So if you're gonna do that type of research, you can do that easily. This is the Sentinel Lab Generator. This is one of my favorites because it makes it so easy to do attack simulations and then test out uh, Custo Query Language Sentinel uh, commands. So the cool thing about the Sentinel one is you can create a real AD environment with domain controllers and Windows 10 and their domain join just like the AD generator. And so that's, that's really nice. So we run Purple Sharp. Purple Sharp is auto automatically downloaded on each Windows 10. And then you can easy, easily run attack simulations. And then you can go into, you can go to do a, a, a KQL query. 
malicious application consent. It creates a multi-tenant malicious application in Azure. You can use it for phishing campaigns. It's just good to understand the attack and defense of this and how logs are generated. So this maps into Azure Threat Research Matrix right here, malicious application consent. And so now we have that documented and we can study and understand that, that behavior. Here's an example of the user consents. And then you can go in the Azure Porter or you can use Sentinel KQL to look at the audit logs. And then it has the Manage Identity Generator. It creates uh, VMs and an attacker could steal the JSON web token that's the managed identity and log in as that user. Question in the back? Question? Oh, uh, Purple Sharp. No, that, that's not my tool. Purple Sharp is by another uh, guy out there, another security researcher. Uh, pur Purple Sharp is like Atomic Red Team. It's it's a binary. It's a it's, it's coded in C Sharp. And you just drop a binary, and it already has all the Mitre Attack Framework uh, attacks built into it. Uh, I'll try and do a demonstration. That's that's one of the live demos I'm going to do. So Purple Sharp is excellent. It's a newer tool. So kind of think Atomic Red Team, but just drop a binary. It, it's not really a script. It's a C Sharp executable. So this is logging in as a uh, managed identity right here. And uh, this is what the attacker would do. They would uh, do a JSON web token request. They would log in as that service principal. And in uh, Sentinel, you can actually query and see managed identity logins. So a lot of security incidents and penetration testing is using this type of attack, the managed identity attack. You can create a vulnerable storage. It automatically uploads sensitive files. I named them like customers, CSV, finance, spread, spreadsheets. You can test for this anonymous blob reveals directory listing of all the files. So that's lcomp equals list right there. And then ADFS Federation is it creates a ADFS server and it will do self-signed certificate or if you want to import your own trusted CA signed cert, you can do either one. And so it creates an endpoint on your internal ADFS server and you can log in and test it. And then you can look at the logs. It's configured with ADFS audit log security best practices. So then you can do KQL queries and you can, and you can look at that. And then this is the golden SAML. So this is the first part of the SolarWinds breach incident. They extracted out the token signing certificate. This was a real attack. This guy, Dr. Nestoria Cinema, has awesome research. He's got a tool now. You can do the first part of the Golden SAML. So I'm running that right now, and hopefully I'll do that. And so now everyone can do that. Now you have a disposable lab. You can, you can spin it up, test this attack out, and then spin it down when you're done with it. So this is, these are the logs that are generated. Azure ED join, this is the final generator. This basically will create a Windows 10 VM that's joined to Azure Active Directory. There's a lot of new use cases for this, like Microsoft Intune, device management. Um, but the interesting thing is it creates a single sign-on token called a PRT, primary refresh token. So the attackers are figuring out how to extract off the PRT and use it to log in as users. It's basically, think of it as like a, a cookie that the attacker can extract out and then use it to get unauthorized access. So then you can look at these sign-in logs. And so I'm documenting all this mapped into the, uh, the Azure Threat Research Matrix. So that's really like the last slide where I can just kind of talk to you guys about what it is and now maybe you understand a little bit better. Um, Purple Cloud kind of is in the past because it does the classic detection engineering with the AD generator but it's also looking at the future of identity, cloud native identity. And now you can spin up your own range, your own simulation lab and attack cloud identity using this tool here. So there's eight generators, only one of them kind of lives in the past. If you want to look at your own on-premise and active directory, then sure, you can play with that and, and that's going to be useful. But the other seven generators are more looking at cloud native type of attacks and being able to define the defense and the logs that you need. Okay? 
Um, if there's no questions, I think we got a little bit of time. I got one question. Sure. When your lab um, has like defender disabled, or I'm wondering about you know as defender updates or threat detection if someone came and just maybe they weren't reported or whatever, or whatever the case may be. Yeah, great question. So you asked um, if if Windows Defender in my labs is, is Windows Def Windows Defender disabled? No, I don't. I don't disable the anti malware scan engine on, on these at all. Um, and so you're talking about the first use case where we have a classic Windows 10, and it has um, uh, no. I just let it run, and so we'll we'll see if Purple Sharp runs. So Purple Sharp is going to run a simulation on the on the Sentinel generator. We'll see if it runs. So that's a good question, though. With Windows 10. It's actually really hard to disable the anti-malware scan engine when you bootstrap a system without any user interaction. It's very difficult to do that. Um, but Windows Server, it's very easy to bootstrap a system to disable uh, Windows Defender. It's very easy to do that. So, did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. All right, let's do it. So first, um, let's, do, let's make this fun. Let's first do the app consent phishing attack, okay? So you guys saw, you guys saw that generator that was creating the um, the vulnerable malicious application. So this is a tool called O365 Attack Toolkit. It carries out an application consent phishing attack. I'm starting to see a lot of blue teams have to deal with this, where a user gets phished, and their API permissions get to get um, consented to, allowing an attacker to read email via Graph API. So let's do Terraform output and let's grab the, um, the app secrets here. We're gonna use this as an attacker. Let's first grab the client ID. Now this is in my home attendant as an attacker. This is in my home tenant. You need the client ID in order to build the attack and you need the client secret. So I'm gonna grab that real quick and I'll do a live demo. And so I just generated this with Terraform. It took like two seconds. Now I'm going to take the client secret and plug it in here. Let's do uh, Terraform output client secret. And that's the client secret right there. So I'm going to destroy this as soon as this demo's over, so don't worry. <laughs> I'm not just, I'm not. Um, so here it is. Now I've got enough to create an app consent phishing attack. Okay? So I'm gonna, as, my, as an attacker, I'm gonna connect here. Okay? So I'm an attacker right here. Now I'm gonna generate a, uh, a URL that I'm gonna use to abuse a victim. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna pretend like we fished the user. That's all this was. I'm going to log in as my user right here. This is me. I'm going to get the. I'm going to get on my phone here. I'm going to approve it. Approve. And boom, right there. You guys seen this prompt before? So I just created the whole attack simulation right there. I'm going to consent as a user. And now the API abuse attack has taken place, and the, the attacker is now using Graph API, and they're inside basically being able to run. Now let's reload, and the attacker has a nice portal where they can read my email. So that was all just application consent, phishing, Graph API abuse, and we're able to do that with Purple Cloud. We're able to like stand that up really, really fast, and it also builds all of the API permissions inside of Terraform. So you don't have to do that. You don't, know, you don't have to know what, what to put in. It automatically does it for you. So that's, that's how that works. And then, then you can go in and you can look at your logs and you can configure your logs to like detect this attack. That's the idea behind this. I'm not just showing you attack. I'm saying we can actually defend against this. Now let's go look at our logs. And Purple Cloud allows you to rapidly do that, simulate that. Yeah, I'm pretty much coming running out of time here, unfortunately. Um, I got like four more demos. I could like talk for another couple hours about this. Um, so I, I think rather than trying to rush through another demo, um, 
you know, stay in touch. Let me know if you have any questions. But like the other four demos are just doing similar types of stuff, like Azure Active Directory, Sentinel, Purple Sharp. Um, so here, here's the Sentinel lab that was created, Azure Sentinel. And look here, it created, uh, what it does is it outputs each VM. So now you can RDP into it. Oh, and another cool thing that auto does, if you're concerned about security, it auto whitelists your IP address. So it uses Terraform to detect, see this is the domain controller right here that was just created. It does ifconfig.me, finds your public IP, and adds an Azure NSG. This is us here at the hotel connecting. So now you can only RDP from this source IP address right here. So that's a nice little feature. And if you go ch change locations, you do a Terraform apply, and it'll automatically change the NSGs. So now you're, you're not exposing your VMs to the public internet, quad, quad zero, you're just, you're just doing just your source IP. And that's all just uh, configured through Terraform? Correct. Well, Great, great question, man, great question. Um, so if you're like a real deep Microsoft guy, which I can kind of tell that you're kind of involved in Microsoft, I'm just guessing here. Uh, ARM <laughs> templates are kind of like the thing to do. Okay. Um, if you're in AWS, it's cloud formation, right? Whatever the infrastructure is code. To me, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you, right, right. go for that. I happen to use Terraform as my day job, and it's more of a universal tool okay. that works across all cloud providers. So that's why I like Terraform, because you can do Azure, AWS, GCP and you're sticking and you're just getting good at one thing and you're pushing the changes. And Terraform is actually adding a lot of providers for Azure. So they're, I think they're pretty mature on the Azure support. I mean, everything I did demonstrate to you guys was with Terraform, right? Now, ARM templates are great. Um, I particularly don't like them as much because they're, I think they're kind of unwieldy. I don't know if you know Robert, Roberto Rodriguez. He created a project called Azure Simulan. And it's a golden SAML ADFS lab just like what I did. And based, full credit to him, like this, this tool was inspired by that, the ADFS generator I did, because I saw his Azure Simulan. So that's, it, that's an ARM template. Okay. He did ARM template, and he did, did uh, PowerShell um, PSCs, the, I, I can't remember what the name, uh, they're called, uh, Desired State, DSC. He used Desired State modules, but it's very hard to edit that. So what I did with, um, what I did with ADFS here, is if you go into the ADFS generator, is you can fully customize your ADFS config by going in, in here. And each one of these scripts gets downloaded from the storage container by the system. So now you can easily just edit the, the PowerShell script and customize how you want to install ADFS. And you can customize the domain join and this is a master script that downloads all that. So I kind of just opened up the hood and made it easier, I think, to edit things yourself. That's all. So everyone, uh, the last thing I want to say is um, thank you to Besides DFW for putting all this together. Um, I hope to connect more with community here. And here's the free SANS workshop that is a guided vulnerability lab scenario with Azure Active Directory. It's free, it's a two hour, uh, you can register for it, and then you can do the guided vulnerability scenario. And it downloads a VM that has a workbook that's a playbook on how to run the attack. So you'll create your own Azure AD pen test lab, and then you'll attack it. You'll run recon with PowerShell commands, and then you'll do privilege escalation with PowerShell. All of it's in Cloud Shell. So if you like to do Cloud Shell, you can run a whole pen test in Cloud Shell. GCPLI or Azure PowerShell? Uh, Azure PowerShell. Cool. Yeah, you can switch between them, but I, I, I wrote the lab in Azure PowerShell. Yeah, so that's, so these are just some other resources. Um, thank you, stay in touch, and I have some other references there too if you want to get the slides. That's it, everyone. So I guess Q&A, any questions? Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you.
What's that? Yeah, right. Well, if AWS was strong in cloud identity, you know, then I'd be doing that. It's just because Azure and Microsoft is so strong with like on-premise identity, you know? Uh, I'll, I'll post them out on uh, I'll post them out on Twitter soon. I'm going to add this, these slides to the GitHub repo in, in like a, a slides directory, and then I'll just tweet that out. And then uh, my, this one, security puck, yeah. And then the lab, those called pen testing lab for red team.